Welcome back. Today I'm going to be speaking with John T. Marks. He's the author of Hiram's Way, Meditations on the Masonic Path to Enlightenment, published by Lewis Masonic. Now, John T. himself has been described as a devotional mason, uh, not a term that I've heard before, but one that obviously reflects his lifelong interest in the spiritual uh, and spirituality, both Eastern and Western, and uh, a, an interest that has taken him across the globe to mosques, temples, synagogues, churches, teachers and teachings of both Eastern and Western traditions. John T. was born in London and over the last quarter of a century has lived in Great Britain, Zambia, Kenya, and he became a Freemason in Nairobi in 1990. John T. Marks, thanks for joining us. It's my pleasure. Thanks, thanks for having me. It's oh, great you're... honor to talk to you. Actually, I've been reading your your biographies as well. Which is quite impressive. <laughs> oh, great, I'm glad to hear it. Mm. Now, you've been described as a de devotional uh, mason, so we're going to discuss what is devotional masonry and we'll look at more of the uh, spiritual side of Freemasonry uh, today. But perhaps you could just uh, give us an overview of um, your work. You're, you're the author of uh, quite a few books on the sort of more esoteric spiritual side of Freemasonry. Perhaps you could just give us a little bit of your background and how that came to be. Yeah, sure. I mean, the thing is, I'm, you know, I've, I mean, I've, obviously I've read books about Freemasonry. I've been interested in the origins of Freemasonry, but it struck me quite early on that there's a lot of, a lot of supp supposition goes on around the uh, origins of Freemasonry, and, right. and people like to impose their own particular beliefs or, um, you know, kind of romances on 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 where we come from. And I I don't know I I felt like I wanted to look more at what Freemasonry can do for us now rather than what Freemasonry has been. Not you know not to discount you know people who are exploring the historical aspects of Freemasonry. Sure. Not, not at all. I think that's re you know it's all really interesting and really valuable. But for me, I've always been interested in well you know what does Freemasonry give me or give us today that we can bring to our lives. Um, I guess the devotional thing you know I mean I've always been interested in world religions. I've always you know, in my young days, I guess I was a seeker after truth. I went to explore all sorts of religions. I studied world religions at college. Um, I've always had this sense of believing in a deity of some sort. Uh, you know, how how I um, sort of think about that has changed over the years, I suppose, with my expanding mm -hmm. and my experience. But, you know, I, I still do. I still have a very kind of firmly held faith in something. Um, so, you know, I, I guess I guess that's where the description of me as a devotional mason comes from. I mean, yeah. you know, that 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 phrase comes from a book review. Um, oh, okay. You know, I, I did a, I did a series of well, I've done a couple of books um, of sort of meditations based around the Psalms. Just you know, not they're, they're not they're not um, based on the Psalms really, if you like. But they're they're sort of you know, each Psalm was a springboard for some sort of. I don't know, Masonic thought, if you okay, like. Okay. Okay. Um, so it was it was the review of one of those, the second half of that, I think, that that somebody called me a devotional Mason, which, you know, I suppose that's about the best description I've heard. I don't know if I'd use it myself fully, but <laughs> I, I am a Freemason who's interested in how how we how we uh, implement this sense of of brotherhood in the world, you know, with everyone, not obviously not just with fellow Masons, but with everyone, because right. if we're if we're if we're brothers to each other, then we must be brothers to everyone. Otherwise, it doesn't mean anything. Right. Um, you know. So so you know this basic uh, um, kind of bedrock of our belief that that we are brothers under the fatherhood of God. Which you know again, I mean, all of those words can be picked apart. We can use any other formula of words that we like. You know, we can we can. Um, but but those are the ones we use because. I suppose convention allows us to, to 
carry certain concepts with that. But so, so let's use them. But, you know, this idea of brotherhood under the fatherhood of God is, is, is our, our bedrock as Freemasons. Mm-hmm. And, and so all my work, I suppose, is just exploring that and the implication mm-hmm. of that, you know, for our daily lives. Sure, sure. And just looking at your website, masonicmeditations.com, and right at the top, you have a square and compass, you use the Masonic symbol, obviously, and then in the middle, you have um, uh, one of the sort of chakra flowers, and in the middle of that, there's a, a figure meditating, which I guess could be a Buddha, or it could be uh, just a regular person meditating. So how, yeah. how does that connect to Freemasonry? Well, again, it's it's sort of a personal expression of sure. things. I mean, you know, the, 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 sim, the, the person in the middle, man, woman, whatever, is obviously, you know, that's a, that's a sim, very strong and easy to understand symbol of somebody meditating, I yeah. suppose. Um, yeah. You know, the, the, the lotus flower, well, that, you know, that has all sorts of symbolism in terms of, um, you know, sort of rising above above the world and, and being of it and, I mean, being part of it, but sort of separate from it i suppose you know the the, mm-hmm. the sort of eastern connotations of, of the lotus yeah um, you know and it, it stands for the sun and and enlightenment and all sorts of things like that so i don't know it's it's it's, it's something that just appealed to me really it felt sure. i felt like I kind of said what i was about yeah yeah and so were you a practitioner of buddhism at one point because you mentioned that you were involved with different sort of spiritual <laughs> traditions or well, no, actually, but I mean, Buddhism is, is something that I've, uh, you know, I, 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 it's, it's hard to say. I still, I wouldn't call myself a Buddhist. Um, I've not overly been, uh, you know, used Buddhist practices. I mean, mm-hmm. strangely enough, I've been more closer, more closely aligned to Hindu practices. Oh, because, interesting. Yeah. Well, because, well, just because, again, it's about devotion. You see, from, yeah. From the understanding of Buddhism is that, is that there isn't necessarily um, an object of devotion unless it's Buddha himself. But you know, right. I, I like I like I like a god. <laughs> yeah. So you know, Hinduism has mm-hmm. suited me. And I, you know, and I, I, when I was growing up in Nairobi at around up into the age of eighteen or something, I sort of had my first encounter with Hare Krishnas. Right. And that, you know, and that's been kind of you know, I, I was never a member of the Hare Krishnas, but but it's it's been a strong association all my life. And and right. You know, you know, when I when I feel a sense of devotion, I can feel it for Christ. I can feel it for Krishna. I can feel it for, you know, all sorts of forms or manifestations or you know um, representations of of the divine. If mm, you like. But sure. in a way, those are strong forms of Buddhism. I, I mean, I think I said to someone else that Buddhism for me has always been, you know, uh, I'm sort of more interested in how you become a Buddha than how you become a Buddhist because right, yeah. All the, all those stories, in a way, we have we have stories of the divine coming to earth. But but Buddha, story of Buddha is is a for me is a story of a man attaining divinity in a way, you know, or attain, attaining perfection. Right, and, right. And that's what I'm interested in. So if I have an interest in in the Buddha, that's kind of what it is as a as a you know as an example of what we can be as a as a as a place to aim for. I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So a man perfecting himself in some respect yeah. spiritually, yeah. and yeah. and if if I'm not mistaken, that that is the, uh, um, uh, that that's the the theme of your uh, latest book, uh, Hiram's Way: Meditations on the uh, on the Masonic Path to Enlightenment. So perhaps you could just tell us a little bit about the book and what inspired you to write it and uh, what you're aiming at there. Mm, sure. I mean, the funny thing is, actually, I'd, I'd started a different book. Um, and in fact, weirdly, I think it was a, it's a book that's not dissimilar to your latest book, because it, because it, oh, okay. it, was, it was sort of focusing on, the, on, on this question of how to be a man. Yeah. You know, you know the, 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 the archetypes of manhood and the, and the way to be a man in the, you know, in the 21st century, yeah. when so many of our, you know, the, the, our sort of uh, learnt ways of being a man are, are no longer helpful for us. Right. So I'd actually, I'd actually started writing that book. I hadn't got very far, but, but um, and, then, and then I was talking to Martin at, at Lewis Masonic, and, and he had an idea about something else. In fact, I was trying to sell him some of my other books. Okay. And he said, well, actually, how would you like to write one for us? And, 
And so we talked about what it would be, and he was quite keen on this idea of, of looking at our rituals and our lectures and things and, and taking the sort of teachings of them, if you like, you know, the, the, all the things that suggested ways that a master mason should be and thinking about where they lead. Right. Um, so in other words, you know, considering, you know, I think he and I both share this sense that, you know, Freemasonry is is a is a path that an individual can follow to obviously to make make themselves better people i mean that's that's what i think we all understand about freemasonry that we're trying to make ourselves better people but yeah. where, where you know what is the actual end of that path how, how you know how much better do you, do you have to get before you have have got to the end of that path and of course as with any spiritual path the end of it is is perfection Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, if, again, if we can use that word, you know, perhaps it's Buddhahood or, you know, discovering that that spiritual nature within ourselves, fully realizing that. Um, so, so Hiram's way is about following the Masonic path to its to its logical conclusion and sort of considering what that might look like. You know, and as I've said before, that that doesn't in any way imply that. I've done that, but simply, you know, while on the path, you know, one, one can look ahead, one, one can look up, you know, if you, if you use the symbolism of a, of a mountain, then, mm -hmm. you know, it, it is possible to look up at the peak of a mountain from the, from the valley and, and, you know, pick out the path and see where you're going and understand that you're, you're heading for that peak without necessarily having, having got there quite yourself. And, you know, right. it's, it's very important that, that, you know, no one gets, you know. I don't want anyone to get the idea that I feel like I've, I've got to that peak. I'm just, I'm just another, another guy trying to get there. You know, just walking the path as we all are. You know. Mm -hmm. So anyway, but that that was the idea behind behind the book. This sense of, you know, where does this Masonic path lead? And and knowing where it could lead obviously makes it easier to follow. I think because it gives us a clearer sense of of, of where we want to be. So. Right, yeah. So when you compare it to um, Buddhist enlightenment, um, I kind of get in the feeling that uh, that you feel that Freemasonry, in a sense, is a kind of um, it's it's you know comparable to uh, to other spiritual traditions, maybe more uh, esoteric uh, traditions. Uh, I don't know, like Tantra or uh, Sufism or something like that. And um, you know, it, it, and obviously in Freemasonry, uh, you can be uh, any religion, um, at least any ma any one of the major religions. Anyway, I'm sure it differs from jurisdiction to jurisdiction. Uh, so how how do, how does Freemasonry compare to, or at least that's the Masonic path to enlightenment? Uh, how would that compare to, say, Sufism or Tantra? Um, very short answer to that is I don't really know, but. <laughs> Um, the I guess you see the thing is for me. I mean, you know, I, 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 what I've what I've learned is to try and avoid labels, really, because, right. because you know, so any word that we use excludes all the other words that we could have used. Right. Um, you know, so, and and that's that's where we start getting division. I mean, one of my favourite words, of course, is is when it comes to these things, is ineffable, which you know, that which cannot really be expressed in words. Yeah. And it's, and it, so, you know, I think any path uh, followed fully and properly and with heart will lead us to the same place. That's, that's the thing. Yeah. The, these are all about choices. These are all about finding the one that suits you. So, mm -hmm. you know, we could, we, could, we could follow the path of Buddhism or Hinduism or Christianity or, or you know, any, any of these paths that lead us to ourselves yeah you know so so for me the outer form is not so different i mean one of the nice things about freemasonry is that it doesn't actually impose any sense of of what the outer form should be it right. allows allows us to to sort of cloak our journey if you like in any way that we in any, any way that suits us but it right. but it does hold out for us this great sense of 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 unity so you know, in a in a way, I guess that's why I've ended up being a Freemason and thinking about things like that in Masonic terms is because it frees me a lot from from the dogma 
and and label that attend many other systems you know not 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 that it's free of dogma and you know prejudice and all sorts of things um it's funny but just before we, we we started this call i was looking at my instagram account and you know daily i'm, I'm getting trolls and comments about satanism and right of course. <laughs> you know, so so it's not you know everything's gonna uh, seems to upset somebody somewhere at some point but oh yeah you know, I, the point the point is about freemasonry it's very it's very broad it's a very very kind of broad church in that in that it allows us to to have our own beliefs to to you know express those in any ways that we think but yeah it focuses totally on the way we behave in the world and for me you know through all my my kind of lifelong study of religions and and religious practices that's every, everything comes down to that it doesn't matter what you believe it matters how you act and yeah you know and, and freemasonry is a very it's, it's kind of quite a baggage free path i find mm -hmm. you know compared to a lot so you know and i just find it suits me i'm somebody somebody who likes language and the dignity of language you know i studied shakespeare and all this sort of thing mm -hmm. i like i like the kind of slightly old-fashionedness of, of masonic ritual mm -hmm. language like that so you know i'm just aware that i don't think it's better than any any other path or that it's more effective or anything like that i'm just aware it suits me at the moment so sure sure that, it's as simple as that really yeah yeah and um you know i mentioned sufism and tantra and, and i should probably say that uh, you know, there are Sufi Freemasons and there are Hindu Freemasons and Christian Freemasons and Buddhist Freemasons and uh, and and, uh, and so on. Well, I mean, you know, I, I was initiated into Freemasonry in, in Nairobi, in Kenya. Right. Yes. You know, you couldn't you couldn't have had a more uh, kind of racially and religiously diverse lodge than the one I was initiated into, really. So. Oh, really? Well, uh, uh, just uh, tell us a little bit about that. I know uh, Kipling made uh, similar comments with his lodge, but it's all, yeah, what yeah, kind well, of... I, yeah. I, 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 it's hard to think of, 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 you know, good things to say about about colonialism and imperialism, but, right. but, but you know, and there's a lot wrong with it, but... In terms of Freemasonry, it has left us in many places with this incredible legacy of of unity between races and, you know, in Kenya, in tribes who may not always have, have found common ground. Mm -hmm. So you know, I, I think I've told the story a few times, but, you know, I mean, I was initiated in a lodge, you know, I, in the days when two deacons conducted the candidate, I was initiated and, and kind of walked between a hindu and a and a sikh mm. to you know, to a to a hit to a, a a muslim senior warden i think at the time because he became master the next year i um, mean he was the first muslim ma master of a scottish lodge in nairobi and stuff mm. so you know and there were there were members of different kenyan tribes there you know who you know i i'd like to think things have moved on it was a long time ago now but at the time sure. so there was still a sort of history of slight animosity shall we say between between um, tribes and things, but but not, right. not not in the lodge, not amongst Freemasons. And you know, right. it was a great thing. I loved it. I loved it. It was one of the things I loved most about it. You yeah. know, and 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 the, the presence of several uh, holy books on 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 the um, on the you know in front of the on the master's pedestal mm. was something I really loved and appreciated as well. So yeah, and, and you know, that, for me, that's always been one of the major features of Freemasonry. Yeah, the way yeah those things yeah and, and what were the holy books that were on on the altar when you were initiated into freemasonry um obviously there was the bible and yeah that, that's the one i took my obligation on but there mm -hmm. was a guru granth sahib there was a, a, a quran a bhagavad gita um i don't know what else i think that i think m those were the main ones yeah because that basically reflected the people we had in the lodge right right in in, in my lodge we put the bible torah quran and bhagavad mm. gita we might put the dhammapada on mm -hmm. the altar as well i'm not sure mm. but se several i mean that's fairly unusual obviously usually yeah, it's yeah, the bible course, but yeah. but uh but yeah i think uh, you know some lodges are doing that which, which kind of um uh suggests uh that uh the the freemasonry is a is a tradition in a sort of sense of René Gaynon, I know he's a fairly um, 
controversial thinker and personally I find his writing more than a little bit dull but mm. uh, but I think his idea uh, that you know the, the, the different um, main uh, traditions spiritual traditions are in some way a reflection of a primordial spiritual tradition is mm-hmm. is a kind of good one and um you know i don't know about you but one of the things that i find interesting about freemasonry uh you you, you were mentioning that uh these sort of wrong historical interpretations uh which mm. is you know definitely true it gets a uh, free mm. freemasons or origin gets attributed to everything but yeah. it, it's it's still kind of fascinating that yeah yeah that when you look at you know uh, spiritual traditions across the globe whether it's Sufism or Tantra or um, Christian mysticism or the Kabbalah or alchemy. So somehow Freemasonry looks a lot like it, even mm-hmm. though they don't really look that much like each other. Uh, but yeah, that's yeah, going yeah, off at a yeah. tangent. Um, but uh, perhaps, uh, perhaps you could just describe uh, the, the Masonic path to enlightenment, because it probably uh, some people listening to this uh, don't really have any uh, or, or don't have very much understanding of Freemasonry at all, might be wondering, you know, what is it you do in a lodge or what, what happens in a ritual or what, what's the path? Well, you know, the, the, I always find it slightly strange because Freemasonry is described, you know, the, our rituals are described as a series of, of morality plays that kind of teach us things. Yeah. But, but uh, you know, certainly within the English lodges, that's not wholly true because actually the rituals are more about the rituals. There isn't a separate section of a ritual that, that actually has a moment of morality. <laughs> you know, it's, there's not there's not a little side bit where there's a morality play that teaches a particular lesson. Right. I guess I guess you know maybe maybe the lectures on the tracing boards could be described as as kind of moral moments or mm-hmm. the. You know, kind of, I don't know the charges after after each degree, but it's not they're not really um, morality plays, are they? They're just they're just um, kind of formal moments of 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 you know kind of being shown what the next thing is. Mm-hmm. I mean, for me, the Masonic path, like any other path, like all the other paths, is completely internal. Is you know, but as I said earlier, for, for me, the, the thing is that that masonry. Masonry's path is is less encumbered with with other baggage. And clearly, it starts from this very basic and simple point that you know we have some kind of divine parent, let's say, and mm-hmm. we all its children, and and therefore we are all related and all one. Yeah. So that's the that's the bedrock, and then everything else is about how 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 we behave in the light of that fact and actually it's it's just a path towards acting more and more and more in full understanding and knowledge of that basic fact so so the more that we sort of uh, understand our link with I mean I you know I think not just with our fellow humans but personally I feel like with all life with every living thing the more that we understand our or, or, or come to realize and live in the light of our relationship um, as part of nature, as part of everything else, that's where our enlightenment lies. And and the day we become fully, I don't know, merged, if you like, I don't know what the word is, with mm-hmm. with life, with God, with you know everything that is, that's that's the moment of our kind of enlightenment, if you like. That's that's where it leads. That may not be, you know. Here and now, I, don't, I you know, I, I, I just don't know. I haven't, I haven't got any answers to that. But I just strongly believe that the Masonic path to enlightenment is the one that leads us to act towards each other in a way that promotes peace and harmony and and love. It's you know, it's not not complicated. And and right. and, 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 and you know, anything that causes division and separation is yeah. Is is you know that's that's off the path, and ev- everything that creates unity and love and understanding and peace, that's part of the path. Right. Yeah. 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 And so, um, just getting back to Hiram's Way, uh, mm-hmm. uh, what what will readers get out of Hiram's Way as opposed to um, any other uh, number of books on Freemasonry? 
I get, you know, the uh, the idea behind all of my books really is that it's just a little something that we can look at every day to yeah. just remind ourselves and inspire us right. to, to to just get through that day. Yeah. Uh, you know, with one with one thought. You know, it's again, it's a it's an idea that's common to all all sorts of religions and paths and you know yogic practices and mm -hmm. all sorts of new age thinking, if you like. Just just this idea of a, of a little daily daily thing to 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 lift us and remind us and yeah and, you know at the end of the, of the day to think did i and if not well i'll try again tomorrow right you know, no pressure <laughs> just yeah. just you know easy gentle you know be kind to yourself first of all because because mm -hmm. you try you've got to try and you know the whole point is to learn to be kind to everything else so let's start with ourselves and yeah you know just take it day by day really that's 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 the simple thought behind all of my books, really. Right, right. Well, per uh, perhaps I should also ask, uh, who is Hiram and why is it his way? <laughs> well, again, I mean, we know we, you know, Hiram is held out to us as Freemason, as Freemasons, as as you know, the, he's he's in our mythology. He's, he's right. the, the sort of creative force behind the building of the temple, which of course is. It's this, a kind of central symbol in Freemasonry. The building of, of the Temple at Jerusalem is you know, this great temple. Of, I mean, this great symbol of building the temple of our lives. Um, right. You know, brick by brick. And and Hiram was the sort of creative force. So he's he represents in Freemasonry. He represents the idea of the beauty of creation. Mm -hmm. um, but we don't really know much about him as a man. Again, within sort of Masonic mythology, we we know that that he well we have this story that he chose um i don't know how you put it a sort of a, you know an honorable death over a dishonorable life right um, yeah and there's not there's not much more that we, we know about him really other than mm -hmm. what he symbolizes for us so so i can't really talk about him as a as a person but you know as a symbol he's he's the guy we have who we sort of idealize if you like you know he's the mm -hmm. ideal master mason to us yeah. so so hiram's way is you know just just a way of, of sort of linking that idea of of the ideal mason to to where we're going you know we're, we're also trying to to make ourselves ideal masons right right yeah absolutely well you, you mentioned um a few things that i mean i, I think you skimmed over uh, some things of real substance uh you, you mentioned uh, the creative force or creativity uh beauty mm. and mm -hmm. um uh, and death uh before a life uh, i'm not sure how you phrase it exactly but a life of you know dishonor or the, mm -hmm. uh, so perhaps you could just uh talk a little bit about um the beauty and and the creative force and then we can come back to mortality perhaps Sure. I mean, I, I mean, I don't, I, don't, I don't really know what to say. Again, sort of masonically, we have we have this idea of, of you know the th three aspects of, of divinity, if you like, of, of wisdom, strength, and beauty. Yeah. Um, and they you know they they sort of make up literally you know the pillars of of of, of creation. They're, they're what? Yeah, wisdom. Yeah. Suggest that, that creation is built on. Um, right. And. The, the, and beauty, beauty is one of them. So, so it feels to me that, that one of one of our jobs, if you like, as Freemasons, is to is to somehow man, manifest beauty. Um, yeah. You know, and and I think Freemasons naturally feel some kind of affinity to the act of of making. You know, mm -hmm. we we are, you know, we, we have aligned ourselves symbolically at least with builders. You know, with mm -hmm. builders of temples and beautiful buildings and. And the, the idea of, I mean, for me, it's about the sense of kind of focus and and the way that creativity sort of takes us out of our ego center, if you like, when when right. we're when, when we're lost in the act of creation. That you know, that's a great secret known known to all creatives, really. That 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 anxiety drops away from us. You know, it's a kind of meditation. The, the yeah. act of creation is an act of is an act of meditation and i think that's that's a great lesson hidden in the idea of beauty but you know i think also there are lessons in that, in it for us to 
think about appreciating the beauty of the world, the, you know, the glorious situations that we find ourselves in, to mm -hmm. all this all this time just kind of to take us out of ourselves. Because I think we we more and more spend a lot of time focused in on our own our own uh, suffering and our own you know kind of small lives, and we can't begin to to um, you know understand this sense of oneness if we if we're only focused on ourselves we have to we have to look out we have to go beyond and i think i think beauty is one of one of the one of the doorways that can can lead us out into the into into you know the other if you like yes yeah absolutely mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. wisdom wisdom strength and beauty and mm -hmm. uh, you know beauty obviously is that that uh behind it is the idea of contemplation right the, the mm -hmm. medieval intellectus where you contemplate nature or some, mm -hmm. something of beauty yeah. and it, it affects you in some way and sort yeah. of molds you in a way that's uh, compatible or hum harmonious with the, yeah. the divine there's, yeah. there's something in in uh, i can't remember the full quote but there's something in something ritual about you know contemplating the beautiful works of creation right. leading us obviously to to the creator because yeah because when when we contemplate the symmetry, the beauty, the order of, of creation, we we are on our minds naturally. If we contemplate fully, our, you know, our minds are led upwards. Yeah, that's right. And you know, of course, today this is very much uh, being neglected by society. You know, in mm. the medieval period, you had the idea of ratio or um, rational thinking and intellect as this contemplation of beauty that. Is, is meditative and links you to the divine and you kind of absorb uh, in a sense the divine mind that is embodied in the, the beauty of nature but mm -hmm. today of course we're all focused or at least we think we're focused on the rational mostly on mm -hmm. rationalizing but uh, yeah so I think probably that's part of the Masonic path to enlightenment to mm -hmm. use your phrase mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, so, uh, and you mentioned it again. You mentioned uh, sort of mortality. So, how how does that figure into the Masonic path to enlightenment? Well, I, I mean, we're taught quite early on in in Freemasonry that there's more to us than than this mortal frame. Right. We? We're taught taught quite early on in the ritual that that we can kind of carry within us this divine spark. Um, you know, and again, that's something I learned quite early on. You know, a, a, a sort of perspective, if you like, that I learned quite early on from from my contact with the Hare Krishnas, in a way. Right. That's that's a key and very early teaching in the, in the Bhagavad Gita, that that we're not our bodies. Yeah, you know, our true self is is not physical but spiritual. You know, mm -hmm. in the in the Gita, obviously, I can't I can't remember it word for word, but you know, it says that it says that the true self, you know, never dies, doesn't grow old, doesn't can't be burnt or hurt or killed or suffer because because the true self is not is not physical. That might be a good place to wrap it up. So how mm -hmm. can people find out more about you and uh, and and buy the book uh, Hiram's Way: Meditations yeah. on the Masonic Path to Enlightenment? Uh, it's been great great to talk to you and really nice to kind of meet you, even though oh likewise vicariously. Um, <laughs> I look forward to reading one of your books. Actually, oh, thank you. Okay, well, um, as you mentioned, my, I mean, I've got two websites. There's one that's just jauntymarks.com, okay. and then there's masonicmeditations.com. Um, Hiram's Way is available from Lewis Masonic, and all, all my other books are available from Amazon or from my website. Great, and Lewis Masonic is lewismasonic.co.uk. 